All right, next in our agenda, gentlemen. The, there is um, a civil rights issue, major civil rights issue on bloggers, writers, political activists um, in Vietnam. Are you familiar with that story, Christian? Yes, I am familiar with that story. Um, it was uh, 13, I believe it was 13 bloggers and mm -hmm. political activists, uh, three of which were sentenced to... Three to 13 years, probably? I think it was like 13, 14 13? years, something like that. It, it was a ridiculous number. All because um, of what? Because they were speaking out of... Well, the, the actual charge that, that the Vietnamese government comes up with is... Um, trying to overthrow or plotting to overthrow the government. And really a lot of these are, uh, a lot of these are actually um, Catholic church organizations that are trying to actually help the poor. You know, so as many issues as I have with the Catholic church, this seems to be a, a, a part of the Catholic church that's actually doing some good and people are getting thrown in jail for it. Uh, I know one of the people had a three year sentence that was like uh, uh, suspended so it was like a probationary thing but these people are really being thrown in jail for speaking out you know something that i think we we take for granted yes um because you hear a lot of people oh we need to get rid of these people out of the street protesting well no no no, no. yeah that's what we do in this country that's what we're allowed to do in this country you know places I like mean, vietnam without that we wouldn't have women's rights we wouldn't have the freedom that we have today, the rights we have today. We wouldn't have Martin Luther King Day. Exactly. Yeah. Civil rights, workers' rights. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could go on and on. Um, so don't yeah. be afraid to speak up. The, the people of Vietnam, if, if they want change, it's really up to the people to make change. Well, changes like this happen over time, and there are usually a lot of martyrs to the causes. You look at uh, South Africa and the years and years and years that people went through so much, so much, mm -hmm. just to get the same rights as the rest of the country. Um, people like Steve Biko, who I think a lot of people, I think he gets overlooked a lot in history, um, but very important, important guy was under house arrest for a while. Uh, the South African government wouldn't allow him to be in a room with more than one person. Uh, it was a way to, to limit his speech. Um, eventually, he was uh, murdered in prison by the guards as part of an interrogation. They had said he died uh, because he was having a hunger strike and it was some sort of complication for that. No, but he, they took pictures of his body. There was a, a news editor who took pictures of his body and got that actually snuck him and his family out of South Africa. Um, in order to just to get that story out that they, they beat this man to death and he, in jail because he dared to think that people should have equal rights. So basically South Africa was ahead of the curve in terms of advanced interrogation techniques. Well, I, I, <laughs> I don't think it's an interrogation technique to just beat the crap out of somebody until they die. Um, that's just cruelty. You know, that, that's just, that's... That's what that's what happens when when somebody of one race thinks they're better than somebody of another race just because of their different race. Um, it's called racism. Yeah, <laughs> that's the definition of racism: thinking your race is better than another. Yeah, but so. then you get you, then you get these crazy things that happen. You know, the things that happen in South Africa, things that happen in in India, where where Gandhi was just trying to basically get his country back. You know, these types of things they take time. And it takes a lot of work, it takes a lot of effort, and people get hurt along the way. But unfortunately, but that's that's sometimes that's is the price for of freedom. Right. You know, uh, armed conflict doesn't do the job nearly as well. I, and I, I don't know why that is, and I don't know why. I totally agree with you. But I don't know why. But, 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 I don't know why people haven't figured that out. There are people in the Middle East who would. Who, who will take up arms. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, if you look at Israel and Palestine, you look at the Palestinian people. If they went about trying to get their own state in a more peaceful manner and did that whole 
passive resistance sort of thing instead of launching rockets that, that by the way, are completely ineffective. You know, they, they don't even hit Israel anymore. They, you know, they have, they have enough technology now to where uh, these, these rocket attacks don't do anything except exactly. provoke a response. Exactly. Usually a disproportionate response. What is your solution to this... Israel and Palestine, long history of uh, not, it's not even a football rivalry. I, I, they, know, I they, know the UN was supposed to vote on whether giving Palestine statehood. They did. Um, they did. It wasn't. Uh, was it successful? No, I mean, they did vote on, they, they did become, they are recognized now. Um, by the UN. By anyway. the UN, yeah. But whether uh, other governments recognize it, it's, it's a step right. towards statehood. It's not uh, official, or uh, it it hasn't gone to like Security Council or anything like that. The, uh, uh, the U.S. is one of the one of the countries that voted against that for some reason. But but really, what what Palestine would not really need to do to be successful is to have their their own movement that that mirrors the the Gandhi model, the Martin Luther King model. And, and goes the peaceful route. You know, if they do that, then Israel starts looking worse and worse. If they meet, if they meet nonviolence with violence, that's how the British Empire lost India. That's how, you know, that, that's how the Jim Crow laws were finally defeated and, and civil rights happened in this country. Because when peaceful protesters are met with violence, the rest of the world takes notice. Yeah. Just, Just like the whole situation in Iran. Syria. Mm -hmm. yeah. peaceful. Syria. Yeah. Uh, it started off peaceful. Uh, Bahrain. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. You know, the entire now those, those didn't Arab work Spring. Out. Yeah. No, a lot of those didn't work out. Some of those did work out. A lot, a lot of those didn't work out. But you know what? It takes a sustained movement People have to be willing, and you know it, it's it's not an easy thing. And apparently, the vote, yeah, it passed the UN 138 to nine. Yeah, that's old news. <laughs> it's old yeah. news, but that's that's not like official statehood. That's just sort of a. Yeah, that was in November. Yeah. So.